give you another illustration. It has been very helpful to many people. It doesn't always happen this way. Sometimes I have preached and people have come and talked to me for no fewer than a few minutes. I've even had people come down the aisle crying out, What must I do to be saved? Cry out to the Lord and be saved. But that's not the way it happens always. I remember preaching up north one time and a girl came forward and she says, I need to be broken. I need to be saved. And I knew something of her case. I knew her father well. And I said, But how many times? Have you been saved? How many times have you prayed that prayer? She said, six. And I said, it didn't do any good, did it? She said, no. My life is vile and sinful and I'm empty and lost. And I said, well, there's no sense then in us repeating that same mistake, is there? She said, no. She said, what do I do? I said, go home. Just go home. And cry out to God as though hell were opening up its mouth to swallow you down. Cry out to God that He might save you. She came the next night and she looked just tore up, just, just totally broken. And she said, I cried out to God all night and He did not answer me and I fell asleep. But I woke up this morning and I'm just in such distress. I don't know what to do. She says, what do I do? I said, you have two options. Most of you will think this is cruel. I said, you have two options. Stop crying out to God and go to hell. Or continue crying out to God till He saves you. She went home. The next night I was there with her father and we were talking about these things and he was excited. Most fathers would have been mad. But he was excited about what God was doing in his daughter's life and the way that it was handled and, and everything. And we were up there weeping and the, the old man was crying out for his daughter and then the music started and he went and sat back down and I took my seat up there in the front and I was sitting there. I was still crying out for this lady and all of a sudden someone plopped down beside me. Opened my eyes and looked and it was her. Just glowing. I said, what's happened? She goes, if every person in the world got together and told me right now I was lost, I would still have the greatest of confidence that my God has heard my voice and He has saved me. I said, what happened? I said, she said, I cried out all night and I fell asleep in just total distress and I didn't know what to do. And I woke up the next morning and as soon as my eyes just flown open, she said, God pressed upon my heart, I have saved the daughter. And she said, the love of God was shed abroad in my heart. Some of you old, old people will remember preaching like that from a long time ago. But we've turned it into a little business, haven't we? If you're here today, you could be saved. You may be saved in the next five minutes. You may be saved in the next five weeks. But as preachers of the gospel, we must deal with you honestly and not like charlatans. Salvation is a supernatural work of God. I would submit to you that the work of salvation, the work of the Holy Spirit in salvation, the work of regeneration in that is manifested as much power as when Christ was resurrected from the dead and greater power than when the Spirit created the world itself. Because in this work, the Spirit is creating, recreating taken a wicked, vile, God-hating heart and recreating it in true righteousness and true holiness in the image of Jesus Christ, in the image of God. That is the gospel. That Christ died for sins. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. That Christ died for sin. And why is that necessary? Payment has to be made. The justice of God must be satisfied. Your sin must be put away so that you can come to God and He can forgive you. 
And that was done through the blood of Jesus Christ on that tree. And it is applied not through some little contract, but it is applied through the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit. But at the same time that it is applied through the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit, at this moment, God commands all men to repent and believe that today is the day of salvation, that you are to flee from the wrath to come, to flee from the law of Moses that condemns you into the city of refuge who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Run to Him. Repentance is simply giving up to stop fighting against God and to stop attempting to gain your own salvation through your own works, to literally give up and fall upon Christ. That is salvation. So that you say, nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. And when that seed grows in you to the point where you know that you're standing before God, is 100 absolutely percent based and founded upon the perfect work and merit of Jesus Christ, then you stand before Him with confidence, knowing that all your sins have been atoned for and that you are righteous in Christ.